Good morning, everyone. I'm Tom Klein. We're, this morning, we're going to talk about how to sell more RVs and stop more lawsuits, a step-by-step -step guide to boost your online reputation. I appreciate you taking a few minutes to chat with me this morning. So in order to stop more lawsuits, we need to talk about risk mitigation and corporate governance. In order to intercept problems and lawsuits, you need to focus on three different areas. Uh, number one is dispute resolution. And dispute resolution starts with your online presence. So how is it that you are uh, dealing with those online complaints? Are you addressing them? Uh, and we're gonna talk about that in just a couple minutes. Secondly, compliance. Are you compliant with all of the laws and all the rules and regulations and do you know about them? And third is risk transference, which is what can you do in your business uh, either through insurance policies or through corporate policies and procedures in order to transfer risk? So we're gonna talk about all that today. First, you manage what you monitor. If you're not watching your online reputation, if you're not thinking about what insurance policies you have and, and, and asking those difficult what if questions, what if this happens? What if one of our drivers was to get into an accident? Is there enough insurance to, to cover that? Um, you manage what you monitor. So if you're watching things, then by all means, you are managing them, and therefore you can talk about what the risk is that's involved. So I want to, we're going to focus today on online reputation, of course, and that starts with these 36 websites. So I advocate that you, on a daily basis, that you look at Google, Facebook, Yelp, reputation.com, Pissed Consumer, My Three Cents, Ripoff Report, and Dealerator. Now, those should be a part of the daily routine. Perhaps your greeter could, could take a look at them and then send you the uh, complaints that need to be addressed. But we're going to talk uh, at length about how to address them and, and what to do and, and, and get into that in just a minute. The rest of these are, are websites that you should look at on a monthly basis. Take particular note, though, of Glassdoor. Glassdoor.com is where employees go to post their reviews about what it's like to work at your dealership. So pay particular attention to Glassdoor. Uh, you should screen them at least monthly but um, employees will go on and, and rate your business while they're still employed with you. So when you have online complaints, what is your process at the dealership? This is what I think is, is particularly good. First thing is one person should be responsible and that person should have the authority to spend money and to resolve issues. The first, when a, when a complaint gets posted, that person should investigate to get a sense of the situation, then pick up the phone and leave a message. Here's how you leave a message. Hello, Mrs. Jones, I saw your post on Yelp this morning and I wanted to reach out to you and let you know that we wanna make sure you're satisfied. And, and in order to do that, I'd really appreciate if you call me at the dealership and then leave your phone number. Customers really appreciate when you say that you want them to be satisfied with their experience. So I would always use that magic word because uh, nobody for certain tells me that they're concerned about my satisfaction. Uh, and I'm a consumer too. And I buy things, I buy RVs and boats and real estate and groceries and everything else. Um, and when I have a complaint, nobody's ever said that to me. Um, this process takes time. Getting customers straight is not something that you're gonna snap your fingers and have that happen. Um, and problems cannot be solved on the phone. So I wouldn't expect them to. You have to invite the customer into the dealership. Some dealerships have a paradigm of, hey, we didn't do anything wrong. Mrs. Jones just didn't qualify for financing. It really doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong. The customer still has to be satisfied. This is how you increase your reputation online because when a customer who's shopping for an RV sees that the customer had a complaint, then you posted a response, and then later the customer went back online to update their review because you satisfied their concerns. That's really something very attractive to people who are looking to purchase because it shows you care. Nobody expects you to be perfect, but they do like to see that you address concerns. That makes them feel good about about shopping with you because they think if they have a problem that you're gonna address their concerns too. So you need to designate a customer satisfaction manager. That person has to be empowered to spend money and make decisions. If they're meeting with the customer and they say to the customer, I really can't make a decision on this, I have to go check with my boss, the customer is gonna get upset because they're gonna say, well then why aren't I meeting with the person who can make the decision? So <clears throat> the customer satisfaction manager should conduct business only at the store. And again, you cannot transact business on the phone or through email as much as customers would like to. Part of that is having them invest in the process by coming into the store. And you can't always get these, um, these things straight the first time they come in. Sometimes it takes two meetings, sometimes it takes three meetings, but super important that you get them in because otherwise they are not particularly invested in the process. Again, re-emphasize that you wanna satisfy the customer and you wanna satisfy their concerns. There's a theory or an axiom, I guess is a better word, in the loss control business, that your first loss is your best loss, which means when you have an upset customer and you bring them into the store, whatever money you spend on them at that point is going to be the least expensive way to resolve the problem. So your first loss is your best loss also means that it's the least expensive way. If you let these problems sit out on the internet and, and the customers just fester, they will go to regulators. They will go to the attorney general. They'll go to the Better Business Bureau. They'll go to lawyers. And once those other people get involved, usually the price of getting it resolved goes up. As a part of um, getting these, these customer problems resolved, the person who is resolving them has to assess the risk. What is the risk of that customer spinning out of control and going to a regulator or going to a lawyer? It's hard to assess this risk. This is really tough. You can't really do it from just looking online. You have to talk the, to the customer to assess the risk. And part of assessing that risk is figuring out how much money you're going to spend getting that problem resolved. Some problems don't need much money at all. If a customer is dissatisfied with how they were treated in your store, why not invite them in and give them like a gift certificate for lunch for $25 and say, hey, I know we didn't uh, transact business. I appreciate the fact that you're our customer. Please consider us again another time. And here's a gift certificate for lunch. Super simple, super easy. The customer will be neutralized in many cases. And, and that's really important. So whoever is assessing the risk has to determine the, the dealer's um, um, appetite for risk and leaving these, these problems um, um, unresolved. We have a little judge's gavel here because that person who's assessing the risk really does have to be the judge about whether these problem, about whether this customer's problem is big enough to want to spend money on. I would advocate that all customer problems, if they post on the internet, are worthy of getting resolved. That's how you increase your online reputation to being really great. It's how you turn it around is you get the customer's problem fixed and then you ask them to update their review. Don't ask them to change their review because if you ask them to change it, they're gonna feel like they've been manipulated. But if you ask them to update it, it's a whole different thing. So how to respond to complaints on the internet. 
you're going to be really defensive and you're going to want to say, hey, that's not what happened and that's not how it goes. But you have to read, listen, think, and then pause and reply without being uh, defensive, without tone, be upbeat, be friendly, communicate clearly, and most importantly, don't argue your case on the internet. So we've got 10 different reviews we're going to go through real quickly here so you can see uh, what to do and what not to do. Uh, don't waste your hard-earned money with this company. They don't follow through or are up on anything. Lots of promises. The service department is a disgrace. I've purchased more than 10 RVs over the last 35 years, and this company is by far the worst. I believe when somebody says they purchased 10 RVs over 35 years, I believe them. What I would do here is I would spend some money getting this guy happy because he's likely to buy another RV. Um, Chuck D, very quick with the bait and switch tactics. Lots of transparency and there lacks a lot of transparency in their dealings. It took someone posting a bad review for the manager to call and offer what he wanted only in return for his removal of the bad review online. Again, if you're doing, <clears throat> doing this transactionally and saying, if you do this, I want you to remove it. The customer will see right through it. It's disingenuous. And so you wanna ask them after you've satisfied them, after it's all done, you wanna ask them to update their review, not remove it and not change it. Um, <clears throat> Henri G said, once I said no to extended warranty, manager came in and increased my APR by a half a percent. What does this mean about their operation? What it means is that the F&I manager, first of all, this is illegal, but the F&I manager has a target gross. And when the uh, extended warranty was taken out, they said, okay, well, if you're going to not buy my warranty, I'm going to raise your APR. Totally illegal. But um, I certainly believe Henri, that happened to Henri. Bought a new travel trailer. Two deep cycle batteries would not stay charged with the solar panel. Took the unit to be checked. It was there for a week and a half when I picked it up. Um, I was told it was working like it should. Brought it home to discover I had the same problem. Solar panels should be charged so, so the fridge and the lights work. Batteries die in about two days. After reading the reviews, I don't think I should take it back to them. It's brand, it's brand new. It's supposed to be brand new. So good S in the customer service department said, sorry to hear this. Can you please send details and a description of what happened to our email address? Our corporate team would be able to address this and help you. Well, I wrote hello because he just did. I mean, you can go into your CRM and see who Jack S is, call Jack on the phone and get the problem resolved. Don't make the customer go through another step to uh, try to resolve a problem when he's laid it out here perfectly. Um, called to see if they carried an item. Older guy who answered couldn't be bothered to see if he carried it. He just saying, come in and you can see what's here. That's what I call lazy. So the dealership responded, not sure what item you were looking for. It's not normal for us to not look. Well, what does that mean exactly? I mean, I think he's trying to say, we usually are pretty good, but why don't you just say that or tell the customer you're going to come in and, and, and pay for their part for free. Um, someone, whoever is doing this, has to be able to respond in a meaningful way. Listen to these reviews. It's very important. You can learn a lot about your business operation and what's happening and what changes you need to make inside uh, the dealership in order to have better processes. Really important to listen. Next review, how you should not respond. Very unprofessional and deceitful. The store takes advantage, charges twice as much for repairs. Ended up finding a store that did half the work, at, uh, to do the work for half the cost. Um, the quote you received was before anyone had ever seen the coach or assessed the damage. You borrowed the trailer from the owner and then the black tank froze while in your possession. You decided to put a heater on it toward the black tank of thought. Instead, the tank melted and need to be replaced. They're arguing their case on the internet. Shannon Vaden is not going to appreciate you arguing your case on the internet. Maybe it's true. Maybe she did melt the black tank. Don't argue your case on the internet. You're going to lose ground with Shannon. 
and you're going to lose ground more importantly with other customers who are reading these reviews. Remember when you respond, you're not only responding for the customer, but you're responding for future customers too. This is a big mistake. Um, Cash Mac, thank you for re replying to my review in such a timely fashion. What's disheartening about your reply is that you were able to reply in one day, but it's been nearly two weeks and I still haven't received a call from the many voicemail messages I left. Whoever is responsible has to be responsible. I wrote busted here because they've got poor, this dealership's got poor practices. The person who's responding isn't the person who's following up with the customer. Again, you have to have a centralized philosophy here and make sure that someone's executing on it. Kevin C, sales will forget about you once you buy. Service centered for scheduled fixes is terrible. Some technicians seem knowledgeable. Some technicians seem very knowledgeable. The workmanship was terrible and almost cost us. So Kevin, we apologize for letting you down. This is not how we want our customers to feel. We'd like the opportunity to speak with you. Please email us your contact information at this dealership. Why can't they pick up the phone and call Kevin and get him straight? Poor process here. Um, when you purchase an RV and doing the walkthrough, make sure all the equipment doesn't have oil leaks. Well, Vincent has a good point. Their owner says, Vincent, all of our customers should leave us feeling completely satis satisfaction, should feel, leave us feeling complete satisfaction. That's a good lead. So we're disappointed by your rating. And then again, if you have concerns, please reach out to us at this with your contact information. Why can't they pick up the phone and call Vincent, get him in and get his problem fixed? What does this sound like? They post cheap trailers on their site only to say they can't sell it after you contact them. Had a friend call right after I did and they told them it was available, do not go here. This to me sounds like bait and switch advertising. Uh, sounds like they had a low price to advertise and they just weren't gonna sell it to this customer for that. Uh, poor business practice, a bait and switch is illegal. The Federal Trade Commission will get involved if this customer went that direction. Uh, just again, uh, no one's paying attention here. You can pay me now or pay me later on these customer problems. If you don't get them resolved, I like to, I like to say that customer problems are like rotten fish. If you don't get them resolved quickly, they're going to smell worse as time goes on. So the best money is making sure you get these customers resolved early and you get them to update their review so that uh, other customers see it. Fixing these problems is money in the bank. You'll get repeat business, I promise. I've seen it happen over and over. It saves time, it saves money, and it prevents problems from getting bigger. Um, the twofer here is it prevents costly problems and you get to sell more RVs. Problems that a dealership start on two legs, it's either a customer problem or it's a uh, employee problem. Problems are usually two-legged. Uh, so the early money and getting result, getting these things resolved uh, early, quickly, efficiently, uh, with a smile, with a nice attitude is always the way to go. Other than the two-legged problems, the next set of problems that cost the most money at dealership is advertising problems, just like that bait and switch uh, example we saw just a few minutes ago. So make sure your advertising is clear and concise. Uh, it's okay to, to um, have a disclaimer, which, which would explain uh, an aggressive price, but just make sure it's clear. And all these policies and procedures, whatever you decide they are, make sure that you have monthly training with your employees to sign off with with acknowledgement that they understand your policy, they understand the procedure, um, because if a regulator ever comes to your dealership, you can show them and say, hey, this is where we train on this uh, very important issue. And it's not that we're ignoring this important issue, it's just in this particular case. And then you can argue your case about why this is a one-off and uh, isolated incident. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm happy to uh, answer your questions, uh, or if you'd like a copy of the presentation, 
uh, please contact me. Uh, I'm Tom Klein, and uh, the name of my company is Better Vantage Point. I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me this morning. Thanks for seeing things from a better vantage point, and uh, have a great convention.